Good day. I'm Alexis Martino, and today we have a special guest anchor. Thank you, Alexis. Yes, I'm Mark Arturi, and you're watching STV News. Your topical solution to alleviate that burning desire for strange but true news. I'm feeling it, the burn. <laughs> All right, now listen to these topics. In today's episode, we'll discuss how mature democracies really are. Mm -hmm. Pinball wizards, long lost fathers, and a subject near and dear to my heart, how to make cash fast and scentless odors. <laughs> and finally, we'll introduce Darla Day's Daily Dose. You gotta see this. And continue with Tuesday's top trending Twitter topics. Well done. We start today with a slight step backwards in maturity. Emerging democracies typically exhibit growing pains as they develop stability. For example, in July in Afghanistan's parliament, one female legislator attacked another with her shoe and then dodged the second lady's flying water bottle before colleagues separated them. Older democracies, however, act more maturely, except perhaps in California, where in June, an Italian-American legislator got into a shoving match with a colleague whom he thought made a Sopranos-type slur about recent legislation. And in the mature democracy of Wisconsin, in June, one state Supreme Court justice was accused of roughing up another as the justices privately discussed a case. Who started it, though, is still in dispute. On another note of people who just don't know how to control their actions, a Mr. John Luckett filed lawsuits on 11 different complaints earlier this year against the Las Vegas Arcade Pinball Hall of Fame, claiming that he was wrongfully barred from the premises for obnoxiously complaining about the out-of-service machines, especially Xenon, which he says he has mastered so well that he can play almost indefinitely on his initial 50 cents. Now that's a good value, huh? Among the damages requested, Luckett is demanding $300 for each therapy session he might have to undergo to overcome the trauma of being ejected. Luckett has filed more than 40 lawsuits in his role of, as he puts it, avenging people's attempts to screw him. To be honest, I think he's doing a real good job of it himself. Now let's jump to a more positive outlook on life. Todd Whitehurst may be the father of somewhere from 42 to 60 children based on statistical probability that recognizes his virtuosity as a sperm donor, according to a June New York Post profile. Whitehurst was selected based on his sperm's profile and speed, donated weekly for about three years in the late 1980s for $50 a session, and has been contacted so far by nine teenagers who sent them their photos after piecing together evidence identifying him, despite Sperm Bank's promises of confidentiality. Whitehurst, acknowledging the resemblances to his offspring, seems to find the relationships fulfilling, however limited they are. Said he, I love Father's Day. How nice that a father that wasn't there for these kids while they were growing up is nonetheless still there for them when they need him. Well done, sir. Well done. Guess what? The streets of 47th Street are literally paved with gold, said one of New York City's gold wranglers, as he, down on all fours and manipulating tweezers, picked specks of gold, silver, and jewels that had fallen off clothing and jewelry racks as they were rolled from trucks into the stores. The man told the New York Post in June, that he had recently earned about $819 in redemptions for six days prospecting. You know, when you think about it, I wonder how much I could make walking up and down Michigan Avenue with some tweezers. You know, I'm heading for the Gold Coast. New York scent artist Christopher Brocious had made his name with fragrances recalling childhood, such as clean baby butt, green bean, and baseball glove but felt it was time, according to an April report in New York Magazine, to approach the next frontier, to make a perfume so exclusive that no one could smell it. By Brocious's reasoning, the scents chemicals would provoke whatever reactions scents provoke in those exposed to it, 
but the actual scent would be undetectable to the nose. Hence, no one would know why they were reacting as they were. By trial and error, he combined jasmine, sandalwood, and natural amber and scaled them down in power, yielding what he calls, where we are, there is no here. Said Brocious, the question, what perfume are you wearing, should never arise. But Mr. Brocious, I have a question for you. Could this cause people with perfume allergies to be confused as to why their allergies are acting up if they can't smell what they're allergic to? Figure that one out. And now, on to Tuesday's top trending Twitter topics, where we construct a short piece of prose based on what you are most interested in talking about on the interwebs today. Here goes. Gavin DeGraw, why are you dirty dancing with the help? I'm the type of person that's gotta have it. Happy Women's Day, Whitney Houston. Hey, Wolf Monkey, pray for London. Hey, it's National Wolf Monkey Week, so it's a good thing. <laughs> now, uh, a segment I've been waiting for. How about you, Alexis? Oh, absolutely. Now, without further ado, as you've all been waiting with bated breath, we are proud to announce Darla Day's Daily Dose. I never asked for the anal probe. <laughs> I'm Darla Day, and it's time for Darla Day's Daily Dose. Let me talk about girls in tiaras on their birthdays. First of all, the only time you should ever be wearing your tiara is if you're one of the royalty. A-I-E, Pippa. Oh, that's not even her, right? <laughs> the wrong one. Crap. <laughs> oh, keep going. Keep going, what? Stretch, stretch, stretch. Stretch Armstrong? I knew him. He was a great little toy in the 70s. So was my hair. P.S. My hair is still alive. Stretch Armstrong? Not so much. Any hoot, girls in tiaras on their birthdays. Not pretty. You know why? The only time you should wear a tiara is if you're a little girl and you're a princess. Or if you're a real princess, i.e. Kate Middleton. And since you're not Kate Middleton, girls, get off the street, get off the tiara, and get on with your birthday. You're not that pretty, and you are old. I see those tiaras everywhere. Well, that's all for this week's segment of STV News. I hope you enjoyed our crazy antics and Twitter-tastic mashups. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Until next week, I'm Mark Wolf Monkey Arturi. <laughs> and I'm Alexis. Stay sassy, people. Have, Have a, a great, great day. day. Thank you.